in the movie The Theory of Everything, when Eddie Redmayne, who plays the role of Stephen Hawking, has to explain what cosmology is, he says it's a kind of religion for intelligent atheists. He is not alone in giving this kind of answer. A lot of people associate the study of cosmology with an atheistic worldview. Atheists use science to understand how the universe came to be, where religious people simply believe in creation stories and old myths. In this video, I would like to give a short overview of the history of modern cosmology, in order to challenge this idea precisely. And I will also comment on where this perception of conflict between cosmology and traditional Christian faith comes from. The story I want to tell begins in the year 1915 with a publication of the Foundations of the Theory of General Relativity by Albert Einstein. This is the theory that we still use nowadays to describe the gravitational interaction between the Sun and the Earth, the Earth and the Moon, and so forth. I will not try to explain general relativity in simple terms, since this has been done before by thousands of people much better than what I could do. Where I want to focus is on what happened during the 20s and the 30s of last century. After Einstein published his theory, some physicists started wondering what does general relativity have to say about the universe as a whole? Okay. And two key figures here are the Russian Alexander Friedman and the Belgian George Lemaitre. I will spare you from any attempt to pronounce his name correctly with a French accent. Lemaitre was not wearing a costume for a Halloween party in this picture. He dressed that way because he was a Catholic priest. He and Friedman worked independently from each other, but they arrived at essentially the same conclusion. Our universe must be either expanding or contracting. It cannot remain static. On the picture, you can see the original hand drawing of Lemaitre, which is still preserved today, where the distance between two faraway points in our universe is plotted as a function of time. What is shown in that picture is not exactly the distance, but what we call the scale factor. But I think you won't miss the essence if you interpret it this way. What Lemaitre found is that depending on how much matter and energy is present in our universe, it will either expand and contract later on or keep on expanding forever. And a couple of years later, in 1929, Edwin Hubble confirmed experimentally that our universe is currently expanding by observing distant galaxies. But Lemaitre's research did not stop there, and in the year 1931, he wrote an article concerning a very special point shown in the figure. As you see, the distance between faraway galaxies seems to approach zero at that point. Lemaitre then wondered, could it be that our whole universe has a common origin in a singular event long time ago? Inspired by the knowledge of his time about radioactive decay, he proposed his theory of the primeval atom. Perhaps our universe consisted long ago of a single incredibly massive atom, which then started decaying into smaller pieces. Even though we now no longer think about the universe uh, as coming from one huge atom, his main insights were essentially right and became what is now known as the Big Bang Theory. At the time in which he was carrying out his research, Lemaitre was probably aware that his proposal would not be met by a lot of enthusiasm. A Catholic priest working at the Catholic University of Leuven, using Einstein's theory of relativity to talk about the beginning of time, that sounded too much as someone using science to justify his religious beliefs. Moreover, the most prominent physicists at the time were convinced that the universe did not have a beginning and did not undergo any evolution on its largest scale. In the abstract of his paper called The Beginning of the World from the Point of View of Quantum Theory, you can see how Lemaitre refers to the opinion of Arthur Eddington, 
who was one of the leading figures in relativity at the time, by saying Sir Arthur Eddington states that philosophically the notion of a beginning of the present order of nature is repugnant to him. Repugnant. That is what a lot of physicists thought of such an idea. What was the reaction of Albert Einstein? In a short article about his encounters with Einstein, Lemaitre recalls that when they met in California in the University of Pasadena, they discussed several topics. But, and I quote, when I spoke to him about the primeval atom, he stopped me. No, that no, that suggests creation too much. One of the biggest enemies of Lemaitre's proposal was the cosmologist Fred Hoyle. He had an alternative model to account for the expansion of the universe, which he called the steady state model. In this model, the universe is eternal. There is no beginning of time. Fred Hoyle was a diehard atheist, and he used to mock the idea of Jos Lemaitre. In fact, he is the one who invented the name Big Bang for Lemaitre's proposal in order to ridicule him. And about the people who were convinced by Lemaitre, he had the following to say. The reason why scientists like the Big Bang is because they are overshadowed by the book of Genesis. There are other further examples one could use, but I think that the atmosphere at the time of Georges Lemaitre is by now clear. In the beginning, the Big Bang theory was perceived as the invention of a Catholic priest in order to justify creation stories in scientific terms. This perception changed little by little over time, especially with the discovery of the cosmic microwave background radiation, which is the leftover radiation, light, no? that was produced shortly after the Big Bang and which is regarded as a very important piece of experimental evidence for Lemaitre's proposal. I have an anecdote to illustrate how strong this change in perception has been. In 2016, a friend of mine shared with me some news he had read. The title was 0.0% of Icelanders 25 years or younger believe God created the world, Paul reveals. I was really curious about this claim, so I tried to find out how this conclusion had been reached. The poll had been organized by the Icelandic Ethical Humanist Association, an association of Icelandic atheists. Big surprise. And the question they had posed was the following. How do you think the universe came to be? And the possible answers were The universe came to be in the Big Bang God created the universe Don't know other If you chose the first answer You were put on the atheist camp But you have to realize that If you had given the exact same answer Not so long ago you would have been put in the silly Catholic who follows this priest from the Catholic University of Leuven camp. <laughs> so how have we arrived at this point? There are probably a thousand things you can say, but I only want to mention one, which to me seems the most important. In the recent decades, there have been several famous atheists who have managed to convince the general public of the following statement. The Christian faith is committed to the literal interpretation of the book of Genesis. Or another way of saying the same, all Christians are creationists who believe the universe was made in six days some few thousands of years ago. Perhaps the atheist who has had the biggest impact in this direction is Richard Dawkins, whom a lot of you may know. If this claim is true, then it is clear that the Big Bang is incompatible with the Christian faith, since according to Lemaitre's theory, the universe is several billion years old. But is the claim true? 
are Christians, and in particular the Catholic Church, committed to a creationist interpretation of the Bible. Let us look at what St. Augustine, one of the most influential Christian thinkers of all time, had to say about this. He lived in the 4th century, long before we knew about the Big Bang or evolution in biology. But when discussing how one should interpret the book of Genesis, he was no fan of a literal interpretation. For example, he had the following to say about the use of the words day and night in the first chapter of Genesis. This begs the question what exactly was meant by day and night. There is no way this could refer to the day which lasts from sunrise to sunset or to the night which lasts from sunset until sunrise, since the luminaries in the sky had not yet been created. His point is, if in the story of Genesis the sun was created on the fourth day of creation, how long were the days before? In other words, it makes little sense to interpret the duration of creation literally as six days of 24 hours. Another example, concerning the appearance of plants, Augustine had a very original idea. As Saint Thomas Aquinas, another great Christian thinker, says in his Summa Theologiae, concerning the production of plants, Augustine's opinion differs from that of others. Augustine says that the earth is said to have produced plants and trees in their causes, that is, it received the power to produce them. Augustine believes that God was not busy creating every plant, insect, etc. one by one, but that he instead created the universe in a way in which it by itself had the power to produce them. Don't forget that we are talking about someone who lived 1,400 years before Charles Darwin. By now, you may wonder, but what do Catholics believe, in fact? Aren't there any dogmas in the Church concerning the creation of the universe? I turn once again to Thomas Aquinas. I'll quote a long text, but I think it is worth the effort. The things that pertain to faith are distinguished in two ways. For some are of themselves the substance of faith. In these matters, no one is permitted to hold a different opinion. St. Thomas says that in the Catholic faith there are some things that belong to the essence of the faith. And so you cannot call yourself Catholic without believing them. But other things are only incidental to faith. In these matters, even the saints thought different things, explaining the divine scripture in different ways. Concerning the beginning of the world, there is something that pertains to the substance of faith, namely, that the world began to be by creation, and all the saints agree on this. But how and the order in which it was made only pertains to faith incidentally, inasmuch as it is handed on in the scripture. And the saints, while preserving the truth of scripture, have handed on different things by their different explanations. As you see, a Catholic is committed to the claim that time has a beginning. There is a day before which there was no yesterday. The Catholic Church has been claiming this for about 2,000 years against both the dominant Greek philosophies in the beginning of Christianity as against the materialistic worldviews of the recent centuries. This is why Lemaitre's proposal was initially associated with the Catholic faith. But on the matter of how the universe came to be, the Catholic Church says, we don't know. Right? As scientists and form your own opinion, right? Or even better, become a scientist and help us figure it out. That's all for today. If you are not Christian, I hope this video managed to show that we are not as utterly stupid and 
ascientific as we are usually portrayed. And if you are Christian, in particular Catholic, I hope the next time that a friend brings up cosmology as a topic of conversation, you will be happy and proud about your own tradition instead of being afraid of looking dumb. Take care and see you in the next video.